After dealing with Mary Kate and Ashley in the last review, I need a good palate cleanser. I need something with culture. I need something dense that'll wash away that cynical saccharine crap. Let's see what I got. Hmm. Huh. The last of the Mohicans. Really? How do you adapt something like this for children? Oh, I gotta watch this just out of its morbid curiosity. And then I'll tell you all about it. Well, that was, uh... Certainly something. I was not expecting that kind of batshit insanity. And I can't wait to tell you all about it! This disaster piece was made by Burbank Animation for Australian television in 1987. Outside of the Pacific, they are not well known. Although they do have the distinction of adapting Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde for children. Henry! Oh my god! So when you take that sort of thing into account, you're often going to wonder how an animation studio like Burbank is going to handle sensitive subject matter like American colonialism, race relations, and war. Well, gee, Reggie, I don't know, but I guarantee your body isn't ready! This cartoon opens with the Mohicans walking through Breath of the Wild when suddenly... Huh. One minute in and we're already killing people. I'm on board so far! Father, a Mohican warrior does not run. I will fight till they take my skull. Uh, what would they take? He hardly has hair. Our warriors are falling. We will soon be no more. Son of a motherless goat! This movie's gonna have a higher kill count than Rambo! Now you, my son, are the last of the Mohicans. Well, this is great. Two minutes into the cartoon and already gave away the ending. And I would say that was rather avant-garde of this cartoon, but you killed the wrong last Mohican! In the book, it's Uncas who dies. And his father is the last Mohican. So you totally screwed the pooch on this one. But I guess if you're doing a cartoon adaptation, you wouldn't have the same kind of drama that you'd get if you had some old Indian chief with a distended stomach traipsing around in the wilderness. So there's that, I guess. Good lord, this cartoon has more knives than West Side Story. Sorry I couldn't have got here sooner. Magua, take your man and get... You gotta give your old pappy a decent burial. Wait, whoa, wait a minute. Where did this guy come from? This is set in 1757. Daniel Boone doesn't become a thing until the 1780s. So I don't get this garb. And on top of that, I don't think this accent that he's using has even been developed yet. For all I know, the South hasn't been discovered at this point. I don't know, I never did that good in history. Well, maybe they can portray war better. <laughs> yeah, right. Jumping Jehoshaphat ass! Where was the ESRB on that one? Washington. There's only word yet from General Webb. It kinda hold out to the As in George Washington? Why in the blue blazes of Daisy's bloomers is dude hanging out in northern New York? If this was trying to be a little, I don't know, historically accurate, dude would be traipsing around in the wilderness known as Western Pennsylvania, which would later become Pittsburgh. Go Pirates. I root for losers. I can't help it. But in all seriousness here, why is he shoehorned into this cartoon? Is there a specific reason why? Does he have any impact on it? Spoiler alert. No. 
Wow, Woody Woodpecker was a red coat. I think we come far enough one day, ladies. We'll camp here for the night and press on at dawn. <laughs> Search the area and make sure we're safe to sleep here without having our throats cut by any of your renegade cousins. Now go and look sharp. Wow, he's pretty progressive for the 1750s. True enough, uh, but there were so few guides available. I, 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 I did the best I could, Miss Munro. You said the same damn thing the last time you changed my shoes. And we both know how that ended. <laughs> but don't worry, I'll make sure no harm comes of you upon my life. I swear. All right, soldier. Do you speak with an English tongue or a French one? Quick now, or I blow your brains out. Violent threats. Quality children programming in the 1980s. Uh, and you, Major Haywood. You were meant to be gardeners over your dead body. Well, ma'am, if we'd been anyone else but who we are, that's exactly what he'd have been doing. <laughs> My friends call me Hawkeye. Hawkeye Bumpo, the famous scout. I loved you on MASH. Can I have your autograph? Two daughters, Cora and Alice, and we're bound for Fort William Henry to join him. Fort William Henry? That old dump. God sure hates your pappy. Uh, Mr. Hawkeye, a Huron Indian by the name of Magua. Magua? A murderous dog who speaks with the tongue of a snake. We move from here? Dark-eyed woman, you speak with the sense of ten white men. <laughs> um, pull the clutch out slower, your horse will stall. Oh man, this smoke fucks with my asthma. Would you like to share my horse, Mr. Runkus? No. A Mohican warrior does not share a horse with a woman. It is better to walk. Besides, horse has nicer ass. Mohican? I thought all the Mohicans were gone. No. I am the last of the true Mohicans. After me, my people will be no more. <laughs> Like a dog. <laughs> and huh? Now, Mohican dog, you die. Wow, this is great. Why couldn't Skeletor stab He-Man like this on Saturday mornings? Uh, yet he don't, Magua. Damn! Now, cut the prisoners free, or I'll drill you full of musket balls. <laughs> Meanwhile, back at Monty Python and the Holy Grail. Okay, I think I need to question the officer's leadership potential here. Because dude's bringing out to the war front a canopy bed in a lounge chair. Uh... Where is the tactical efficiency in this? I mean, the girl alone probably takes up way too much space. Damn it, not again. I was foolish even to consider the idea of bringing them from Scotland. But in more danger here than if they'd stayed away. Hmm, this perplexes my chin. Oh look, a chase scene I don't care about. Wait, when did they get a gun? Well, never mind. Man, 
and this makes me yearn for wabbit season. You made your Heward. Know much about bars? I beg your pardon. Do I look like a drunk? Don't answer that. Praise not, Mr. Hawkeye. Uh, not a thing, actually. Well, when a bar finds things is getting too much for him, he just finds a cave and disappears for a while. Oh, a bear! I'm sorry, I'm not as fluent as I used to be in southern stupid dialect, dang gummit. Hear anything, Uncas? Yeah, the best classic rock you ever heard. Time they got guns, too. Got any ideas, Uncas? One idea. Well, hide. You mean that thing you were already about to do? Well, what you gonna do? Uncas and me will try and make it to Fort William Henry and bring some help. Major Hayward will look after you till then. Be careful. Well, they're as good as fucked. Why don't you just roll the stone over their tomb like they were Jesus? At least I know they wouldn't come back. Yo! Figures, Mogwa's special teams couldn't cover the run back, and now Butch and Sundance made their jump. King Mohican and pale-faced dog gone to land of ancestors and take scalps with them. <laughs> Cool! Spider Alice to the rescue! Damn! Stately Wayne Manor. The Huron dogs have made prisoners of my pale face friends. Aw oh, man! They skinned Winnie the Pooh! Speak truth, son of my friend. Tominund has great debt to repay. What will you ask of me? Yeah, could you hunt down Yogi Bear? His CG ass would look way better on your head than Pooh Bear's. Where are you taking us, ye animal? Uh, pale face squaw, speak with tongue of scorpion. Do scorpions have tongues? Over my dead body, ye filthy beast. Never. And over my dead body, too, you bounder. Hey, hey, I'm here, too. I'm a man. Could survive a jump like that. Silence. Or Magua will feed white tongues to buzzards. These characters have the best pillow talk. Oh, that Macaulay Culkin. He's such a playful scamp. You how pleased we are. They were going to make us slaves and cut out our tongues and kill Major Hayward. Well, that last one doesn't sound so bad. Next time. I will be in my tent making the grand strategy if you need me, Capitan. <laughs> oh, God! Oh! Oh, God! I really felt that one. Oh, that's actual. My bad. I gotta go clean this up now. Oh, God. <laughs> Took the bit too far! It's a gypsy violin playing a Hungarian mazurka. Very popular in France these days. God, I'd rather listen to a Limp Biscuit Barry Manilow mashup. Hey, it's Statler and Waldorf in their army days. I salute you. The true casualty of war, booze. Oh, I want you to put every musket ball you got into Alice's carcass. Much obliged, dear. That weren't nothing, Colonel Monroe. You can thank Uncas and Major Hayward here for most of it. Uh, now, why don't we go to my quarters where you can tell me all about your adventures? And everyone out here can die. It is a pity I cannot read. Oh, now, Jim. Oh. Let's not beat about the bush. What do you want? I want a rock! Won't come. What does he mean he won't come? Well, you see, sometimes older gentlemen need a little bit of a assistance. So they take this little blue pill that helps them. Such a pity. 
touch of West. Was that a fat joke? My scouts inform me you have many wounded soldiers and some ladies. Oh, I want to draw them like my French girls. I can allow you to leave under the terms of the truce. But you can go tonight undercover. Where's Obamacare when you need it? Major Hayward, you'll stay to defend the fort. Damn, another dead version. Goodbye, father. Goodbye, girl. Take care of Alice for me. Goodbye, papa. Oh, papa. Oh, just start shooting now! Don't worry, Alice. The men will be with us by dawn tomorrow. I promise. But what about Papa? I've seen him take cannonballs to the gut. He's fine. That's what I love about Burbank animation. They don't pussyfoot around when it comes to acts of violence. They're not above scarring some child for life. Return to home of Huron tribe. Yes, please! Perhaps she can. It's not my own safety I'm concerned about. It's the girls. I'm concerned the background didn't zoom in with me. Tell the girls. No father loved them more than me. Yeah, just don't let their real father hear that. I wish Gene Kelly would teach me to Charleston. I wish Gene Kelly would drive you to Charleston. Voila! The perfect, brilliant military strategy. She's trying to hold back her urge to puke. She deserves a purple heart. Bad news. Oh. Poor guy. Bonkers. Please don't let Shaggy die. You can take my horse and get back to Fort Henry. Let him know what happened. Good luck, soldier. Well, too bad Shaggy fell off the horse 30 feet down the road and broke his neck. Oh well. Fire. Statler and Waldorf, no! Yeah, good luck getting that guy out of the chimney. Or is that how we created Santa Claus? Hey, perhaps you're right, Washington. Next time, could be we'll be on opposite sides. Sorry, sir, but the Hurons attacked. The girls are prisoners. The others are dead. Freddy, Scooby, and even Scrappy are all dead. I have to shuck corn like poor people. Look, Chief wow, the cowboys of Moo Mesa have really hit hard times. Is he doing the locomotion? Oh man, this is the worst cover of Return to Innocence by Enigma I've ever heard. God, you suck. Would have been funnier if they used a banana. This time, die. I swear, Uncas is like John Wick. This time, pale face wrong. Look, if you shoot Magua. Pale-faced squaws die. Kinda reminds me of Philadelphia after the Super Bowl. Hush. Do not speak, Cora. He's right, Cora. This is the engine way. Allows a man to die with dignity. Prisoners speak too much. Light fires. Well, executions used to be an excuse for a family day out. I can get behind this. Now, the last time these two met, Magua here made a promise that next time they'd fight to the death. This true, Chief Magua? Is the Chief's bearskin made out of mashed potatoes? I am unhappy to say, but Paleface is right. 
fight to death. Mortal Kombat! Yeah, the tailgates before a death battle were awesome back in the day. Fighting to the death, a true family bond enhancer. Throw the flag, ref! Oh, come on, he's not really going to. Say hello to Wiley when you land. Well, I'll be damned. That punk bitch is my new chambermaid. He permitted us to come with him. I hate to admit it, but he's a fine soldier and an honorable man. I intend to bust some musket balls in your bitch asses. Or Colonel Monroe, Alice, I'm sure you and Major Hayward will both be happy. Oh, fucking gross! Their children will probably die at the age of five from a severe case of stupidity. Maybe it's time we all made a little peace with one another. One day there'll be no French and no British. Just us. And we're all gonna have to get along. Yeah. Let me know how that turns out for you. Come on, bro. We gotta smoke the skunk weed before I split. Man, I gotta tell you. This cartoon was kind of awesome. They didn't beat around the bush when it came to the subject matter. Hell, they presented dark themes and straight up murdered people! Burbank Animation has some serious balls and they did not shy away from the violence. And in retrospect, this is actually one of their more tamer cartoons because in Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, they straight up showed a stabbing murder and an insinuated sexual assault! So, I applaud them for handling some serious stuff and presenting it to kids. It's kind of a nice breath of fresh air. Now, I'm not saying it's any kind of classic, but I did enjoy it. What's become of me? I enjoyed something. Ugh. I feel kind of queasy. Well, if you'll excuse me, I think I'm going to have to go lay down. Because if I start liking things, I think that's a clear indication that I'm slowly dying inside. Ugh. Now to go clean up that fake vomit I didn't make. I don't really see him walking around in a distended with the oh, shit. And they straight up kill oh fuck. But I guess if you're doing a cartoon adaptation, it would be more sense. Dude would be traipsing around in the western end of Pennsylvania, also known as Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Fuck! But it is a nice change of pace! They handled the short. Ah!